Hi, I'm Wade from Thoroughbred Diesel, and today we're going to be showing you the installation of the Banks Monster Ram intake for 2013 to 2018 Ram 25 and 3500s. So this is the Banks Monster Ram intake for the 6.7 Cummins engine in the in the Dodge pickups. Now there's year brakes on this. They offer this kit for 2007 and a half to 2012s, and then for the 2013 to 2018s. The truck we'll be installing today on is a 2018, so we're using the 2013-2018 kit. This kit is very important um, to you 6.7 owners. Now, one of the catastrophic failures that we're seeing out in the light duty space right now is in the 6.7 Cummins, and it is a bolt or a stud and a nut that has to do with the grid heater, uh, the, the power that services the grid heater on the 6.7 Cummins. And we'll show you once we get in here, but 6.7 Cummins has got a grid heater and basically takes up this entire orifice of your intake. Um, there is a power band that runs and services that uh, that grid heater and the nut and the stud falls out of that and goes down in the intake and can go into a piston and cause you to have to buy yourself a new engine if it, or buy yourself a new engine if it gets to knocking around in there. Banks saw that failure and knew that they could incorporate their uh, long history with intake, uh, improvements that they've done in just about every light duty platform over the years uh, and be able to take care of the catastrophic failure. So here is our, our Banks Monster Ram intake that they've got. Now, um, obviously all the normal stuff with the Banks Monster Ram intake, increased air flow, smooths out the air transitions, you know, just going to help the, the engine breathe a lot better. Uh, but one thing that they had to attack, well, actually two things that they had to attack with uh, servicing the 6.7 trucks was one, we're going to have to have a grid heater for guys in cold environments. And they did that. They offer, they uh, send a heating element that comes with these kits. So your heating, your air intake heating action that happens on the 6.7s is protected with this heating element that comes with the kit. So that's really, really nice. Don't have to worry about that with cold starts. And then the second thing that they ran into, a lot of the kits that, that are out there for intake um, plenums on these use the stock uh, fuel line back. And what Banks did with this was they came up with their own line that is able to still service that injector and then molds around the air intake uh, too. So that comes in your kit as well. You're gonna be increasing airflow, not only through the intake, but now with your intake plenum, plate, you don't have any grid heater in here, so a lot more airflow is going to go through that. So increasing airflow, increasing engine efficiency, and taking care of a very, very known problem on the 6.7 trucks of them dropping the nut off of the uh, grid heater plate going in your engine and costing you an engine. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our installation. We've already gone on the truck and removed the uh, battery cables. You want to make sure that you do that because you are going to be around a lot of electronic components here. So that's the first thing that you got to do on this. Isolate your battery cables and we'll get started with our installation. All right, so we've got our batteries isolated. So our first step in this installation is we're going to remove this plastic cover that goes over our EGR pipe here. So four bolts takes it out. You will not be putting this back on. Go to remove it and just pull the dipstick out. Dipstick's gonna go back home. All right, we're gonna go show you the CCV cover coming up now. We've got all eight bolts, well, six bolts, two studs. We've got all the fasteners out of the CCV cover here. And then we just take the oil fill cap off, clean up around it. And then I just lift it up and put the oil fill cap on, back on so nothing falls down in here. So what we're after is this bracket that we're gonna take off here. We're not, no longer gonna be needing it. There's two eight metric bolts and I think Adam's got a view of it there for you. Uh, so we're just gonna zip those out and you can discard this bracket because you will not be using it anymore. And we'll just pull the bolts out and we'll set aside. I've already got this other one loosened up for us for the magic of movie. 
All right, at this point, you can set the cover back down. I didn't explain that well when I went to talk about the EGR crossover bolt, but you can set this back down now, put your cap back on. You wanna watch this wiring harness at the back, make sure it doesn't get caught underneath the cover. You can put it back on, and then you can put your CCV bolts back in. But I'm gonna show you getting to the bolt on the EGR crossover. So an eight metric, I use a little bit of an extension. What I do is on the upper radiator hose, I just push it down. You can use a wobble extension bar if you want to, uh, or a universal, but I just uh, use that small extension. And I went in here with my ratchet going the wrong way. But the bolt is right directly dead center and you'll see the little tower on the back. And it switched up on me again. So we'll remove that bolt too. That bolt's really, really tricky to get to. So just once you get it out, about even with the hose here, you can usually get your fingers in there and pop that bolt out. Then you're going to be removing the EGR crossover tube. And I guess we might as well stay in the shot and do this all in one thing. I'll show you that real quick. So set this bolt aside. Don't mix it in with everything else your EGR crossover tube. There are two uh, There are two clamps on it. They are 12 metrics, Adam. Can you see everything there? So we're gonna be removing those and you wanna make sure you take your electrical connectors on both uh, the temp sensor here and then the actuator uh, for the EGR. Just unclip them and remove those wires, get them out of your way. I'll switch over to 12 metric here. Gotta take this one completely off, so throw it all away. Other side. Kind of remember your orientation on these clamps too. So you put them back correctly for you. I forgot to make mention, you can go ahead and bolt your CCV cover back down now. You won't need to remove it anymore. So go ahead and bolt it back down so you don't forget it at the end. All right, where we're at now is we're gonna go ahead and just get prepared to uh, take our intake horn off here. So we already got the um, EGR valve wire taken off. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop the uh, Christmas tree clip off for this wire harness that's in this that's in this heat shield and there's one down here on the bottom as well on this stud i've already got it ready and off and then um, this wire here services power to the grid heater now we're going to be using this power wire back as service or as power service for our intake air heater in our banks uh, in our bank's intake, which is really gonna be nice. So the first thing is I wanna do is I wanna cut this zip tie loose right here for the, uh, for the power wire. You won't be reusing that back, obviously. Be real careful not to cut your wire. We'll go ahead and get that zip tie out of the way. And then um, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pop the uh, wiring harness off this, off the stud for the uh, stud for the stud for the oil dipstick. So having everything loose there, there is a 10 metric nut right straight down here. And I'll move my wrench and you saw where I went there. 10 metric nut that's got it on the uh, stud for the power supply to the grid here. So we're just gonna go ahead and loosen that up. And again, that's just a 10 metric nut. And we'll pull that out. And just the nut there that we've got. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take the wire off. 
and then we can move it out of our way here. Then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to service, uh, get the, uh, go ahead and get the old dipstick bolts out here. So there's three of them. There's a short 10 metric bolt here at the very top that actually holds the uh, dipstick down. And then there's a tower right below it that is bolted to the intake horn itself. And we're gonna go ahead and remove that. So you've got a 10 metric bolt straight down there. And then you've got a nut on a stud here right in front of it. So what we're doing is just moving that tower off of there. So we'll go ahead and get all of that loosened up. The stud comes out. We'll go ahead and remove that and then remove our, our other bolt here and we'll get this tower moved out of the way. And that's just gonna get us closer to being able to remove the intake horn. This is a long bolt, so just be aware of that. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and remove this heat shield from the lower area, from the lower intake horn now. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna get us access to the um, to the clamp on the on the boot here. So there's a 10 metric nut on this stud here. We're gonna go ahead and remove that first. And then there is a 13 metric bolt on the other side over here. And we will remove that real quick. And then that will allow us to pull our Heat shield off here. Switch back over to a 10 and then your shield will just move off and then again that gives us access to that clamp on the back side you can see so we can loosen it up real quick as well we're right here we'll go ahead and loosen it so 11 metric of course loosen it quite a bit so we know we got plenty of articulation there Okay, before we switch back over to our overhead view, I want to show you this. There's five bolts remaining in the uh, intake horn where it attaches to the plenum here. You've got one, two in the middle there by the uh, fuel line is three. Back corner back here is four. And then behind there, you can't see it, is your fifth one. So those five bolts are gonna get removed and then um, that'll get us to where we can go ahead and start working on getting this intake horn assembly out of here as a whole. I'm gonna set you up on an overhead shot and show you that right now. All right, we'll run through our, our five uh, 10 metric bolts here on the intake horn. Just go ahead and get them out. The forward PCV hose here. This is going to meet, need to be dislodged and moved out of your way off the valve cover here. I just get it started with something that's not going to hurt it and then pull it right off, like so. And then I'll give you a little bit easier access to that back 10 metric bolt. So that's one, two, three, four, five. That'll have them all out there. We'll show you all of them. They're all going to be the same length. So you can put them back however you see fit. All right. Now, with this, what we want to do, we've got our clamp 
undone, but there's still a wiring harness on the back of the throttle valve right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just shake this back and forth just to get it dislodged, okay? And then just go ahead and pull it out. And what we were hoping for was that the, was that the boost, the intercooler boot was gonna not give us fits, but apparently it is, and that's all. All I'm doing is working with that clamp some more so we can get it dislodged like so. All right, we've got our five bolts out and this intercooler boot down here at the end of the horn, you wanna make sure that everything's loosened up there as much as you possibly can. So to get this dislodged, don't forget there is a uh, electrical hookup on the back of the throttle valve here. So we don't wanna to get too carried away. We're just trying to get access to that wire. So we're gonna pull our horn back and past our, uh, past our wire. And you've actually got two sensors back here. You have got a uh, map sensor that we need to unhook then you have got a wiring harness on the back of here that will need to get dislodged okay and then really watch it power wire and then your throttle valve's got a red locking tab on them just like they all do you just want to push the locking tab back and then unhook it you're good to go so now we can just bring our intake horn right out all right going to give you a close-up shot here of what we're working on with the wiring harness so this main wiring harness that goes across the valve cover right here and then gets down close to the fuel uh, right above the fuel rail we're wanting to get all of the uh everything unhooked from this and get it set over and that's going to give us better access to our fuel lines so i'm going to give you a close-up shot of all the sensors we're going to be in plug in here to get everything off the passenger side folded over to the driver's side so uh, right here we've got our back pressure sensor we're going to unhook then you've got a drive motor right here that we're going to unhook uh, above the EGR cooler. Then there's another PCV sensor right here. The sensor on the back of the valve cover, if you can see that, that one's for the crankcase filter. And then we're going to work on this first injector harness uh, right here. So I'm going to set you up on overhead. And the goal here is to then we're going to be getting this uh foam piece off of here the noise isolator or the isolator that that covers the fuel lines then we'll be able to get that off there and then a couple more the, a couple more points of the harness that we're going to uh, be getting out of the way so i'm going to go ahead and set you up in an overhead shot and show you laying this harness over uh, and then we'll and then we'll go from there all right going to start out with our uh with our back pressure sensor this has got a little slide lock on it and they all do everything that you're going to be working with is going to have a slide lock on it so and then push it in the middle and unhook it uh, on the drive motor here you've got a little lock in the center i just push it out with a, a little flat tip screwdriver here and then pinch top and roll the sensor back The harness has got to hold down right there on that stud, so we will release that. And then on your next PCV sensor, you've got a slide lock in it. Well, get the 
dislodged with my finger there. It's trying to be too fancy. And hook it, and then you've got a, another hold down on a stud at the back here. So this has got us down to our rearmost uh, PCB sensor. So we'll move our slide lock on it. Push it just a little bit farther with my screwdriver here. And then I'll unhook it. Get it out of the way. Okay. So we've got everything done here on that harness and we're down to the, um, we're down to getting to this uh, main one right here. So there's a little clip on this dipstick tube that holds the harness. We're gonna just dislodge that. And that kind of gets our dipstick freed up if we need to move it out of our way. Now on this foam, part what I like to do is I just like to pick the front of it up and then that gives you access to your uh, access to that first injector plug and I use this little um, this little smooth pick here that's for o-rings you see me using it quite a bit I'll dislodge the connector and then I'll try to rock it back and forth as best I can and just work it up I don't pull on it by the wires, but I do like to use the wires to kind of straighten it out to get it out of my face there. And that's got that dislodged right there. So it gets pretty much everything we need uh, loosened, uh, save for that next injector hookup right there. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reset up and get to the other bolts, or the bolts on the dipstick uh, hold down right here that are back there and I'll set up and show you that bolt right there Kind of got ahead of myself there uh, Before we go for our hold down for the dipstick. We're gonna have to go ahead and get this uh, main uh, harness connector uh, Tripped and get it out of the way so to do that on the back side of the plug right here where my thumb is you push that towards the black portion connector and then pull the bail trip down and then it's got to go all the way back to disengage from the main harness and then just simply move the main harness out of your way then you've got a christmas tree pin right here i've already dislodged it and it's ready to go and then that gets that portion of the harness out of your way uh, and then you've got a pretty clear line of sight to that back injector connector i won't be able to get this on video unhooking this but it's the same way as we did with the front and i'll show you how the mechanism on that is so here's your injector harness connector right there and you can see the locking tab uh, there's not a handle or a lever here on the top side of this to dis to disengage that what you've got to do is you've got to stick something flat tip down there like a small flat tip screwdriver to disengage it and then work the the uh, harness out like so there's really just nothing i'm going to be able to show you on video getting to that um you know if, if you can while you're here go ahead and, and dislodge this um this other pcv uh breather tube so we can get it out of our way uh, i'll do that while we're on video we've got a good shot of it right there and just pull it back and pop it off of the filter like so and it goes underneath of the dipstick so we got it out of our way like so so yeah now we're back to that back uh injector connector and then we can lay it off and get this piece of foam isolator out of here all right before you go for your back injector connector right here i suggest just go ahead and picking up on this foam isolator and getting it out from underneath of the back pcv uh outlet right there for the filter so i just pick up on that foam and just move it to the side here and that gives us better access to that back injector plug so we will go ahead and see if we can get it unhooked one-handed which you can't the worst one too so now that gives us enough room to just go ahead and pull this piece of foam out 
and that's going to expose your fuel your fuel rail pretty much in its entirety. Let's slip that underneath right here, kind of get it moving the way we need to move. And then you can kind of see where you're at with uh, connectors. There is a standard. Uh, holding the wiring harness down and all you need to do is pull up on it and that dislodges it it was off on the back one from the factory there and then there is a third one back here and we will work it out yeah i'll need to get it too so now we'll take our and You'll see there's another Christmas tree clip on the uh, on the old dipstick holder. So we'll unclip it. And that gives us the ability to move move that harness out of our way. And then our final harness that will move for us is back here for the air temp sensor. So we'll unhook it and get it out of our way. So now that back, that back hold down for the wiring harness gives us access to where we can prime it. And there you go. So that gives us pretty much what we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to unbolt the, uh, we're going to unbolt the, uh, the uh, dipstick hold down here real quick. And then we can swing it out of our way. And it is a 10 metric as well. It's going to be another one of these studs. I'm going to unhook the GoPro here in just a second. Show you guys what I did here. All right. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and get my GoPro down here so I can show you all what I did there. Hold on, everybody. Don't get seasick on me. Check this out. All right. Right back here is the stud. We just got loosened up, and that holds down our dipstick. So we're going to pull that stud out there, and then, then we can move our dipstick completely out of our way and uh, we can just bungee cord it out of the way here and this harness is loosened up so this gives us pretty much access to everything i'm going to move my main harness out and i'll take it the same direction as i'm taking this whole um uh, taking this whole group of wires and everything and pushing it towards this side so get myself a little bungee cord and get that stuff out of the way and then we'll be ready to attack this fuel rail it's time to start pulling the uh, fuel lines off of the fuel rail on this 6.7. And we're going to show you a couple of things we do on setup here. So one of the most important things when you're working with the common rail, especially on the, on the Cummins, you want to make sure that the feed tubes uh, don't loosen up because when you get a feed tube it loosens up you get hard starts and it's it's it's, it's a fuel leak is, is what it amounts to so what we do is and you can see you know kind of zoom in here we make a mark on you can see at the head and then a mark on the feed tube uh hold down nut and then I actually go one step farther and I'll put another mark on the feed tube and the actual line itself. And then that shows me where I need to be back to get everything torqued back correctly. So uh, what we also do when we take one off is we'll hold the feed tube with a 24 metric and then loosen up the line with a 19. So uh, you have connection here at the head, then you have connection at the feed at the uh, uh, at the rail so you know six cylinders six lines we're gonna go ahead and get these off here um, you know sometimes it's it just depends on where you're at you know try to get this whole harness over and out of your way as best you can uh, a short stubby 19 metric is nice to have uh, in some of the instances and then we'll show you what to do when you get back there to that six line so we're gonna set it up on overhead take off a couple lines just kind of let you see uh, what we work through here and we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it then we're gonna go ahead and get these um, get these fuel lines off oh also inside the kit banks does a really good job they send these fuel line plugs to keep you from getting contaminants down in there make sure that you use those 
Um, and then on your intake tube here, we, we plug that with something so you don't, uh, don't have to drop any tools down in it. So at some point we'll get to a point where we can cover up the uh, grid heater side. But here's a good look at the grid here. This is a really low mileage truck, um, less than 35,000 miles on this truck. You can see how suited up this is. And you can also see how much of a lack of airflow that you get into the intake side with the grid heater um, positioned the way it is. Now, you don't have access or you can't see yet where the bolt is that fails. We'll show you that once we get the plate uh, turned upside down. So we're gonna work on getting this, getting these fuel lines out so we can remove this fuel rail. Show you removing these lines. And we've already marked this first one. I got my open-ended 24 metric so I can hold the feed tube and then my 19 metric to loosen the lines up. So we'll go ahead and do that. Once we've got that done, we can loosen it up at the rail. Just be careful what you're doing here. So one at a time, we will go ahead and start removing these lines. You'll get a little bit of residual fuel, but nothing too awful bad. Put our line plugs in there and away we go. Actually gonna cap off the inlet uh, as well to our injectors. off the feed tube, cap off the fuel rail, and move to the next one. There's one thing that's nice to show here. Your number three injector doesn't correspond to the number three orifice on the fuel rail. It actually is the fourth orifice from the front there. So just something for your, for your cliff notes. All right, we're gonna show you this sixth injector line here and uh, getting to the six injector is a little bit difficult but it's really helpful to have a stubby 19 metric or three quarter whatever you can get your hands on because you might take your line so far with a long ratchet and then not be able to get enough stroke to get it on the other side to get it uh, the rest of the way so stubby is really nice to have here so on the six line you don't have to actually remove it just loosen it up and then what we do is just Flip it up from the rail and you can leave it just like that. We'll cap it real quick. All right, so that's got us taken care of as far as the injector lines go. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the fuel feed line. The feed line comes from the CP3 outlet right here. You can see it uh, and supplies to the rail. We've got a cap for this as well. So this is the same thing here, 19 metric. And uh, we'll go ahead and loosen this up. And then what we'll do is we're gonna do our return line after that, which is gonna be uh, this banjo bolt here. So I'm not gonna be able to do this one-handed. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and pull this line off 
cap it and then I'll bring you back and show you the return line. Back on our fuel rail now and at the front side of it you've got your return banjo bolt. This one is a 17 metric and uh, ours has got a factory paint mark on it so we left that uh, intact to know you know when we've tightened it up correctly. Uh, the return banjo bolt you've got the bolt itself, banjo washer fitting and then the banjo uh, the washer on the back side of that so just make sure you keep everything um, together there. So we'll pull our bolt out first and we'll have the washer. Let's get that out of there. And you can leave the return line there. It's not gonna give you any problems getting everything uh, back together. So really nothing to do there. All right, next thing I wanna talk about is at the back of the fuel rail the wiring harness you can see is this on just it's it's on this side of the uh lifting eyelet and what i do with that is there's enough slack in this harness to manipulate it back over the um back over the uh that eyelet so i'll just pick that up and i'll show you why i'm doing this here in just a second i pick that up and get it on the other end of the eyelet and you can see at the back of the fuel rail here is a fuel pressure sensor. And just the way it's oriented, it's just kind of hard to get to the connector. I like to bring the rail out and then get to the connector and you've got enough line, which is this line right here, to get to your fuel rail pressure connector. So it's time to take our fuel rail out. After we've taken everything off, um, we've got three bolts left of the fuel rail, all 10 metrics. There's one right here. There's a 10 metric stud here. This one was already uh, removed for the hold down for the uh, dipstick and then you've got another 10 metric bolt right back here so we're going to get the three of them out and then we're going to show you bring the fuel rail out and how to get that connector loose we're ready to take our fuel rail out and we've got our fuel rail bolts out so it's ready to come on out and if you notice in the bank's instructions it tells you you can bungee it back you can do that but for the sake of our video and we want to everything cleaned up in the engine bay uh we're going to go ahead and pull the rail out so uh before i do too awful much i lay a rag down here over the grid heater a couple reasons one uh just more contaminants and stuff that can get here and two um the fuel that's going to come out of the rail uh, just try to keep it out of that intake shelf so let's go ahead and pull our fuel rail out here so our fuel rail remember we talked about at the very very back of it there is a wiring harness so our fuel rail what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and i'm trying to do this while keeping the camera steady just pushing it back and over that eyelet and then that brings our fuel rail out okay I can bring our fuel rail to about right here so I can show you what you're looking at in the rail pressure sensor. So here is our rail pressure sensor. And our rail pressure sensor has got a small yellow slide clip on it. You can see that right there. I'm gonna just pull that back and grab it on both ends of it, pinch it on both ends and just pull it back. And then I can just simply push the black plastic portion and I can disconnect our real pressure sensor just like so all right so now we take our rail flip it back over and we can simply lift our rail out now after you got your fuel rail off you're left with four bolts that are holding the intake plate on so this silver plate is your intake plate of course we showed you the grid heater there so you've got a bolt hidden behind uh, our power stud right here for the grid heater then you've got two along the valve cover and then you've got a stud back here in the back see that right there uh, back here sorry 10 metric all three of them even the stud uh, so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and rule and go ahead and remove that and then we'll uh, come back and show you uh, the plate coming off so just uh, you want to take your time here and getting your getting your bolts out of the plate I was trying to cover up some air time so I can get the ratchet turned the other way so remove these four bolts and we'll show you taking the plate off all right, we've got all of our bolts out now. I like to use the upper corner of here. There's a kind of a little prize point there where we can just prize the plate up and take her right on off. All right, now that we have our air intake plate off, our grid heater plate off of our 6-7 Cummins, we wanted to show you the bolt failure that happens with these and i'm going to walk towards the camera and let the ca camera auto focus on it so no we talked about this quite a bit so 
on your this is your air intake plate that you just removed so if somebody's cutting in on the video i just want to give them all of the everything they need so we'll show you top side this is the um this is your top side of, of it so you've got your air intake here your grid heater your grid heater warms up your air uh your incoming air into the motor uh, at certain uh air temperatures and then you have this stud on the top of the uh air intake plate this supplies power to this grid heater now on the bottom side of this this is your little bolt and nut that are the failure point here so what that is and i'll just looks like turn it to the side is a better way to do this i'll put my shirt behind it so it's got a uh, thing so your power comes in and then this supplies power to your grid heater via this band right here that sends the power this little bolt and stud right here this is the problem or the stud and the nut here this is the problem the nut either vibrates and falls into the motor can take out the motor go into a valve uh, or the stud breaks off or you even have a fa electrical failure the grid heater melts this plastic around that uh, that insulator uh, and then can really snap off then so whatever the failure whatever causes it if that piece goes through the motor that nut or the stud or whatever it is goes through the motor it's going to cost you a valve train can could cost you a motor um, chew up a piston if it makes it that far so it's definitely a big failure and the beauty of this kit um, is obviously one gets rid of that you don't have to worry about that anymore that failure motor of your motor uh, you're increasing airflow across the intake uh, runner you, the bank's air intake is wide open right there so we're going to have a whole lot more airflow that'll make it through that then you have the intake horn that is going to increase airflow as well and then provision through this for the intake heat element for your intake air so your wait to start light is going to function you're going to have good cold starts and all the things so i know that we've said this ad nauseum just want to make sure that i tied all of this back in together when i showed you the failure point of this grid heater and intake plate on these six seven cummins so make mention too when you're working around this intake plate like this you have your intake air temperature probe that comes through the bottom make sure that you don't bend that it's a one inch uh, nut this will transfer over into the banks plate so before you do anything else i would go ahead and transfer that over and make provision for it in the plate you want to take it down there and tighten it up before you install the truck so we're getting ready to roll over into the truck now show you some of the things that we do getting ready to install this but i'll tighten this intake uh, air temperature sensor down and then we'll see you back in the engine bay Okay, folks, one thing I wanted to do before I got in the engine bay and I thought about is I wanted to show you bolt placement on your intake plate and also bolt placement on the fuel rail. So we're going to go over that real quick because when you take your fuel rail off, there's three bolts that come out when you wind up taking your plate off. After that, there's four bolts. So I just want to lay this out on the table and I want you to see it uh, before we get back in the truck because you may be confused about it. So this will be a good stopping point in your video if you've got any questions on it. So try to position my table there as best for you as i can all the things so the way that i um, can lay this out if i'm confused as to where my first four bolts go uh, these four bolts will be put on the intake and tightened down uh, torque spec of 18 foot pounds these will be installed before the fuel rail goes on the easiest way to figure out where they go is you can lay your fuel rail up there real quick and what that does is you have your four standards of the fuel rail and then the your open holes this is going to be where your bolts go without the fuel rail on there so i lay my uh, fuel rail up there sorry i was looking at it in the viewfinder so i didn't have it lined up right there is a uh, relief cut in the intake plate here for the fuel inlet um, which is really nice so you can line that up and see where your fuel rail goes so I'll take my fuel rail off here and just remember where he goes. I know I've got two bolts that are gonna have to go here and then a bolt here and a bolt here at the end. So let's take that off. Let's put the bolts in there where they go. So you've got your two uh, hex headed bolts that are against the, uh, that are closest to the cylinder, closest to the cylinder head or closest to the valve cover are gonna be right there. And then the forward hex head bolt is just the regular hex head. And then the back bolt is the stud 
which is going to uh, hold the wiring harness on later on. So you can put your fuel rail back on there and look at that and you can see that that is correct. Now while we've got our fuel rail on here, let's go ahead and show you what the bolt pattern or the bolts are that will be going on to it. So you'll have these silver aluminum risers that are going to go underneath of the rail. Uh, and then we'll put those in real quick here. You can set them on and then set the rail on top of them is the easiest way to do it. Okay, so now we'll set our rail right on top of that. Just like so. Okay, now your bolt placement for this. And the easiest way to remember where the studs go is the wiring harness is pretty much going to be at these these three ports right here. So there were only three bolts when we just when we did the rail by itself. So you're going to have your two hex heads that are going to be closest to the valve cover right here. Okay, then you have you'll see that the rail will be marked for, uh, with a washer mark or a tooling mark. So there's where your other stud. And then this bolt is the uh, is the last stud bolt. This goes in with the wiring harness that will come back over wiring harness will lay back here and the stud will be your next bolt. So I'm just going to put it in there for reference. If you need to stop the video and you need to, uh, and you need to mark it so you can see what it is in your truck, that is exactly how it lays out. All the torque specs on these are 18 foot pounds. Remember this bolt doesn't go in. Uh, when we do the rail, it's only these three bolts when the rail four at the intake plate, then this goes in when we get to the wiring harness. All right, we're in the home stretch of our installation of our Banks Monster Ram intake now. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to put the Banks uh, Monster Ram intake here on the table stay and, you know, show you kind of a comparison between your stock intake and your Banks Monster Ram intake and then also show you the components of the stock intake that you're going to be rolling over to the Monster Ram intake. So we're going to walk through that with you right now. All right, um, so as you can see on the Monster Ram intake, the first thing that I want to talk about is the um, accessory ports that you have on the Monster Ram intake. That will be for if you decide to use a uh, boost pressure gauge or maybe um, an injectable like a water methanol or nitrous. So you actually have four ports on the, um, on the Monster Ram intake. You've got two on the very front here. I've already put the plugs in those and then you've got two on the back. These are not, if you don't have anything done to your truck, these aren't gonna be immediately used. Banks sends plugs for you for these to uh, plug those. So you'll wanna plug those off unless you've got a gauge that goes in the, again, those are 1 8 by 27 MPT pipe threads. Then you have another po port here for an expandable thermocouple that's on the top of the banks. A plug is sent with that one too. That will not be used here um, either. All right. So obviously when you go to do the job, you're going to have to roll the EGR valve over. Banks sends you new uh, gaskets for this that, you can, uh, that you're going to use back. And the EGR valve, when you go to install it, there is going to be a Banks uh, plate that is going to be put on here at the very last. I put this on after I've got my crossover tube on. So, you know, EGR tube will go on. This will get bolted to that, but we're going to do that at a later time. Torque spec on this, use your new gasket. Torque spec on these is 18 foot pounds. Then you want to make sure that you clean this surface up real good so you've got a good seal there. All right. So there's the EGR valve we've talked about. Obviously, the gasket at the intake side, Banks sends you a new one in their kit. There is a stud on the front of the throttle valve or on the intake. Uh, you're going to roll that over to your bank's uh, monster ram. They make a provision for that, which is right there in the very front for you. And then uh, next is going to be our, the powder coat on these is really, it's really nice and, and they do a good job on that. So I'll tighten that down once we get there and I need to. And then next is going to be the throttle valve. The throttle valve, I want to talk about when you go to uninstall this from the stock intake horn here it's going to be stuck because of just soot this truck was a low mileage truck so it's been really really easy what we've done here but you guys have got high mileage trucks and got a bunch of soot in here you're going to have a little bit of trouble getting this unstuck from the intake uh, runner itself i just used a soft-faced hammer is what i did just gave it a couple of love taps and it eventually came off should have had that bolt out a little bit more 
And obviously that's gonna fit up directly onto our bank's air intake. You wanna make sure that you clean this surface as well, get it cleaned up. Banks does send you a gasket for that. So we'll clean that, that surface up real well. We will be reusing our stock fasteners here. Torque spec on this is 89 inch pounds back to the um, back to the bank's intake. No special orientation here. This needs to be oriented just like it came off of the stock intake. So there's our throttle valve we talked about. Oh, and our map sensor. So the map sensor, is on the back of the uh, is on the back of the stock intake horn. We're going to roll it off. This is another thing that's going to be stuck by soot, and this is very delicate. So you want to be super, super careful with what you're doing with this when you go to take it out. Uh, just keep working with it. When you get it out, good time to clean it up before you put it back into your bank's uh, ram intake. It goes right here at the bottom. It's got a provision uh, hole for that. So it goes right there and we'll install that as well. So you wanna make sure that you don't break that and be very careful around that map sensor. It's expensive and it can break. So just watch what you're doing there. All right, you've got two power extensions that are gonna come with this as well. We'll get to the to the uh, temperature extension, but this one's probably gonna be immediate. This is for the EGR valve. This is a wiring harness extension for the EGR valve. Comes in the kit as well. We'll show you using that when we get there. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna clean up um, these. We're gonna clean the throttle valve up. We're gonna clean the EGR valve up and get them ready for installation. I will put the throttle valve on it before I go in the truck. <coughs> Excuse me. But for me, I'm not going to put the EGR valve on it. I'm going to probably set the EGR valve on it just to keep uh, contaminant from getting in there and work with that. But I will do a final torque on that with my um, with my my bank shield uh, that goes on there, and it actually goes will go on the front. So I'll do a final torque of that once we get in there. I'll go ahead and install my map sensor and get it ready, and I'll have everything ready to go in the truck. So we'll see you back in the engine bay. All right, before we put our uh, bank's intake plate on. We've got a little bit of prep work to do. So where we left off here, you've got to remove your stock gasket uh, because the bank's kit comes with a new gasket in the kit. And <laughs> while I'm working, and this is completely open, I like to put a couple of rags down in here just to block off the intake side of it. And you can tell, I mean, everything that you touch, and it's, you know, one thing that somebody had made mention of in one of the short videos that we did, yeah, the fuel caps are they overkill absolutely not because you've got soot on this motor it doesn't matter where you touch or how clean you get it there's going to be soot here the grain of soot goes through an injector gets in a control valve or a nozzle hangs it up and you've got a problem so be clean here as clean as you possibly can everything that you're going to do here you're going to get soot everywhere especially trucks that are high mileage and whatnot so um cleaning this before we go back with our banks intake obviously we need to get this intake runner clean um use whatever you want to i like to use a scotch bright uh pad and get everything cleaned up there that does a really really good job this is a low mileage truck so clean up here was really really easy uh when you use a when you use scotch bright like that make sure you're aware that you know you've got some fibers and stuff come from it too so just be real conscious of that. So I've got my rags down in here, which caught, catches most of this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull my rags out. I'm not going to make you all suffer through this. Then I'm going to get a vacuum cleaner and vacuum all this up real good and clean all this out. I'm not going to make you suffer through watching that. I just want to give you some tips on getting this clean and what to do. But just remember, the main thing to know here is the reason for these clips is because of the contamination that you've got here because of the soot. So just be quite careful of it and be conscious of it and know that it can take out a component of your fuel system. So we're going to get this cleaned up and then we'll come back and show you putting the plate and gasket on. Uh, the intake gasket that comes with the uh, kit has got uh, banks written on it right here. So you want the bank side uh, looking up at you. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and lay the gasket down there. You can spray the gasket onto the actual intake plate itself if you want to do that to help you hold it. But without the fuel rail on here, it makes it you know easy for us. So if you guys left the fuel rail on, you might want to think about putting some spray adhesive on that gasket and sticking it to the plate. You know, just personal choice there. So whatever you want to do. So we've got our uh, one thing that uh, say here too. Make sure that you wipe the plate off real good uh, before you go back on with it, uh, and you've got it good and clean. So now we're going to go ahead and just lay our plate in real quick and just like so. Now remember, as we talked about out on the, um, out on the cart there, there's going to be four bolts. They're going to be our initial bolts right here. 
that we're going to go with. So remember, we're going to have the um, if you if you have any questions on where the bolts are or where they go, you can look back on our uh, look back on our our little piece there. So I'm going to start with our stud. Our stud goes in the back outside uh, portion of this. And you just want to wiggle it back and forth just to make sure that you get the uh, get aligned with the gasket. The next will be the hex head bolt on the outboard side of that, which is going to go right there. If it doesn't feel good to you, don't go any farther with it. You don't want to cross thread here. And then your inner two, which will be around the close portion of where the uh, intake air heater is going to be. We'll put those in now too. I hope you can see that good. So remember our positioning here, two hex heads closest to the valve cover, hex head forward uh, closest to the, in the mo outermost two holes on the intake plate, hex head closest to this return line here, then stud in the back. So we're gonna take a, just a second here and we're gonna tighten these down to 18 foot pounds. Okay, we got our plate on, got it torqued down. What I wanna do first is before I go any farther, I'm gonna go ahead and close up my intake put a rag in here make sure that i don't have anything that drops down in there and can roll down into our valve train so next we're going to go ahead and put our air intake temperature sensor in i put it in with the plate on the truck i just find it easier to tighten down this is aluminum on a steel uh thread here so you just want to get overzealous you'll know when to quit tightening on it when it bottoms out you're you're good to go so um you can just use a one inch wrench there, not too many ugga duggas and you're good to go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set our uh, risers in here that are included in the Banks kit. Now there are four of these and these risers, what they're gonna do is they're actually going to, um, they're going to keep the fuel rail at the height that it needs to be at. Uh, so remember the positioning on those we talked about out on the table, you've got your, two outer ones and then your two inner ones. I guess the inner and outer is subject to whatever you want it to be right there. So um, like we talked about uh, before, really important to leave these caps on, these fuel, on this fuel rail because you've just got so much soot that you're working around here. And I don't know why that PCV line keeps popping up in my face here. So, all right. So with this, remember we took our fuel rail uh, pressure sensor off. So we just need to get it hooked back up. So uh, only one way that it can go on. So we just go ahead and push it back onto the rail sensor till it clicks and then push our clasp up and then our wiring harness. And you can't see this. We've got to take it back around the engine lifting hook and then We'll set our fuel rail down like so on our risers. So it won't hold its position perfectly here. So grab a towel, wipe my hands off. So we're gonna do our first three bolts just the same way that it came out here. So that's gonna be our two, uh, it's gonna be our two hex heads and then our one stud. Our stud, uh, first one is gonna go at this uh, forward position here. So I'll move my rail up with the risers. And then you can tell by the tooling marks on this one, the next stud uh, will go with this uh, wiring harness plate or the uh, dipstick plate. And we'll get to that one in a second, but now we're gonna do our two hex head bolts. They are closest to the valve cover right here. So we'll get them on. And then we'll get our third one on here to fight through that and then get it started. So remember, you've got your two hexes that go closest to the valve cover. Then you've got your third stud that will be there. Now, again, that fourth one's gonna go here. Uh, and what I like to do is I like to just go ahead and put that fourth one in and get it lined up. And you can leave it there, you know, just, just the way it is. 
but you don't want to tighten it down you just want to tighten down the other three so tighten these three down 18 foot pounds just like the other intake valves and that'll have your fuel rail on very important keep your um, keep your fuel uh, caps on uh, positioning on this you know one thing that you're going to want to do there too let me make mention of that while we're here i use the fuel return bolt to be kind of my guide here and you can actually go ahead and do this go ahead and put your banjo washer in between the fitting and the rail itself and go ahead and start that um, return line bolt so and then we'll tighten it down here in just a few minutes but yes now it's time you can go ahead and tighten down one two and the third uh, fuel rail bolt 18 foot pounds you're at a point here at your fuel rail installation as well um, that before you tighten down the uh, rail bolts like we were just talking about uh, the more lines the, the more that you can get on it for alignment the better off that you are uh, the fuel feed line for this i'm going to go ahead and uncap this and while the rail's still loose i'm going to go ahead and, and flip it into position here that just keeps me uh, to where I've got a uh, position on this and I want to make sure that that PCV line stays out of my way. I can make good engagement of that and get that tightened up. So the more that I can get really on the rail, the closer I've got it to straighten to straight uh, before we torque everything down, which is which is really nice. I mean, it's just just one less thing that you've got to go wrong because if you go putting your injector lines on here and you've got to do quite a bit of manipulating on the lines, um, you know, that's that's going to be a thing for you there. So, um, yeah, I, the fuel feed line, go ahead and drop it on, and then you can tighten it and the, the banjo return down. So we're going to get the rail bolts tightened down, and then that uh, fourth one that we le left in here, we can take it out until it's time to get our wiring harness on. All right, so we've got our fuel feed line on. We've got our fuel return line on. We've torqued this one down to the paint marks on the return side. We torqued it down to our paint marks uh, lineup. Then our fuel feed line right here, torqued it down to 30 foot-pounds. Don't forget to tighten it up at the CP3 as well. You want to make sure you get it tight. So now where we are here is we're going to go after that number six line and get it uh, back on the rail. And we'll try to set you up here uh, as best I can so where you can see so if you'll remember we left a number six line on the engine and just swung it out of the way so uh, we're going to go through here and we're going to pull our cap off and one thing i want to make mention about these six seven fuel rails and you guys probably all, all saw this as you were working on it when you put these caps in or you push the line you might notice that some fuel will leak out around these fittings around the squares here and that's perfectly fine uh, that's the way the rail is designed. It is designed to have relief inside of this cup. Uh, so that's 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 perfectly okay. So we've got our number six line here. We're just going to flip it back in to the thing. I know I'm shaking the camera here. Apologize. I'm trying to get it in a stable spot so I can do this. So we're going to flip our number six line back in. Do not bend these lines where you're manifold your uh rail is should get you where you need to be you don't want to make any permanent bends on these lines if you uh if they're not lined up loosen your rail back up and start all over and get everything back so 30 foot pounds on the on the line nuts both at the head and at the rail but we made our paint marks so we're going to take them to where our paint marks are on that so this number six is terrible so uh, you know what to do here just grab it and growl we'll go ahead and tighten that one down and then after i do that i like to go ahead and lay that harness over on that side because we're pretty much done there at the very back so we're gonna go ahead and tighten this down um and then we'll come back in don't forget to lay this main harness back over uh, i'll do it after i tighten it up here we can lay that main harness back over our lifting hook there and then we're ready to proceed forward and uh, put more of our fuel lines on we're going to talk about one of the uh, other super nice features of the banks kit and it is this uh, number one fuel line banks designed this line to uh, clear their monster ram intake which was huge uh, and it is oe you've got the heavy end of the nut is uh, for the injector side just like oe you know your thinner side is is at the rail uh i, I they just did a really good job with this line i'm, I'm a big big fan uh the line does come capped from the factory but i still like to blow it out make 
make sure there's no contaminants in the line from packing or anything like that. Definitely suggest that you do that. And then I'm just gonna show you, you know, putting on these lines and what I like to do. Maybe it's a mental thing for me, but this is the way I, I put on five, nine and six, seven lines as well. So I always start the line on the feed tube side and then I'll, I'll just engage it into the feed tube and then I'll, I'll simply sit it on the fuel rail and then I'll uh, go ahead and tighten down my side. And then what I find with that when you do it that way is you'll find that your the nut side the the uh, that tightens it to the rail and to the feed tube will dang near uh, tighten all the way down. Uh, with no resistance. So that means that the line's not in a bind, it's not in a kink or anything like that. So, you know, this line doesn't have the benefit of having those paint marks like we did on the other lines uh, to show us that everything is torqued down correctly. So we will have to torque this line to 30 foot pounds uh, to, for it to be correct. All right, so we've got our fuel rail on. We got all of our lines tightened down. So now we're starting to work on just getting everything back together here. And the first part of this is uh, starting to work toward getting the wiring harness and your oil uh, check dipstick back on. So that's what we're going to do now. All right, first thing, your intake air temp sensor uh, banks includes a harness extension for this for you. So we're going to go ahead and put that on right now. Push it on to it click and then slide it back over. And then I just lay it out of my way. Then the next thing you've got to do is you've got to remove the stud back here that you didn't tighten up on the intake runner. And that's actually where the dipstick is going to sit. So the dipstick sits down there after you remove the stud. And you place the stud back in real quick. And what I'm going to do is try not to get you all seasick. I'm going to zip that back down and then we'll torque it here in just a second. And then we torque that to 18 foot pounds. Okay. All right. Once that is torqued, we go ahead and take our wiring harness here and set it back on the studs that you've got. So you've got one in the back there. I hope you all can see that. We sit that down there. Then we sit the middle one and then the forward one. So that's got everything done there. Um, we will go to our rubber isolator now and we'll go ahead and reinstall it. That can go forward of that. Just keep chugging at it. All right. And goes underneath of the PCV entry right there. And voila. And then our next, our rear PCV hose. We just want to get it underneath of the dipstick and go ahead and slide it on the cover on your crack cast filter like so. All right, we're gonna finish up the rest of this top side wiring harness. And the first thing we're gonna start off with is this uh, extension that Banks sent us for the intake air heater. The reason for this is because the intake air temp has moved from kind of the outboard position of the intake to, or the inboard position, well, I'm sorry, I was right the first time. The outboard position of the intake to the inboard position of the intake. I don't even know why I went that route with it. So we just want to connect it back to the, uh, back to the stock harness, which is a little bit hard to reach, but this, um, but this extension makes it really, really nice. So you're just putting it into the stock side and then clipping your uh, clip over. Hope everybody got to see that. And then um, what I do here is go ahead and kind of move that out of my way because I want to make sure that I get this main harness uh, Christmas tree pin plugged back into the dipstick holder right here. Try to move my hand so you can see that. That's a very important thing because if you don't, that main harness will rub on that dipstick holder and it'll rub your wires in and then you're in, you're in bad shape. So you wanna make sure that you go ahead and get that. And actually we can go ahead and plug this bail trip connector in right here as well. And somebody has tripped my bail. So now we can engage it. 
and click it, move it till it clicks. Don't hook this connector in yet. We're not ready for that. Then we laid the wiring harness over the top of the motor here. So we just wanna go ahead and put it on its standards and then uh, hook into the next three sensors. Then we've got a stud right here. Put that stud on and connect the wire for the motor and make sure that it clicks. And then um, our back pressure sensor over here, push it down and clicks. And we've got everything that we need done right there. So that's got the remainder of what we had left of that top side wiring harness. And now we are going to move over to getting our uh, Banks Monster Ram intake horn set up and on the truck. Oh, one more thing here. Uh, you've got this clip on the main wiring harness that can go back and it goes over the dipstick just like so and then push it back so we keep that keep everything tight there make sure you've got enough articulation to get to that connector but don't install it yet and there you go one more christmas tree little push pin i forgot to talk about here on your main bell trip connector right up here at the top uh, where it goes across you want to make sure that you get that push pin hooked into so now that should be all of our push pins hooked in i saw that when i did the preview of the last slide so sorry about that uh, also on uh, this motor there's a red locking clip in there i didn't show you that uh, being locked down but i've got the red locking clip in there and that's good to go so we are good to go here now now we're ready to go ahead and begin installing our banks uh, monster ram intake we're getting ready to install our monster ram intake here so i'm going to show you what you need to bring with you uh, into the engine bay to get started. First off, we're gonna start with the bolts. There's gonna be six bolts that hold the uh, Monster Ram intake down. There are two flange headed bolts uh, in this kit. These are the ones that are gonna go inside of the, um, that are gonna go inside of the Monster Ram. They're gonna go in the middle position uh, and I'll kind of walk you through that. Then there's two uh, more galvanized looking bolts in the kit, a little bit duller. Um, they need to have the washers put on them. The washers are in the, the kit as well. And then you have the long bolts, which will go on these outer side, outer edges of it. Uh, need to put the washers on those as well. Washers are included in the kit. All right, and you wanna make sure that you've got your intake uh, gasket ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull my rag out of here that we had in there to keep anything from falling. Make sure there's nothing inside of it. And then you make sure you get your rag out of the intake uh in, in the intercooler pipe so we'll go ahead and lay our uh intake gasket down this next part of this you're going to want to have a magnet handy for and i'll show you what we're going to use that for as well all right so first thing that you're going to want to do when you put your banks intake on is you're going to want to engage it into the intercooler boot here and then just kind of twist it around i've got my wiring harness for the uh egr uh, back here and then the the temp sensor uh, the temp sensor uh, side of, we've got it ready I'm sorry for the throttle valve there on the on the back side harness so we're gonna go ahead and just place our um, banks monster ramp into the intercooler boot there and then engage it and then just simply turn it around now you're gonna want to watch your dipstick you want to kind of just bend it out of the way be dealing with it later but this is going to be getting us lined up here for that like so so you can see kind of the care that banks went to on this to get everything fit you can see uh, why they uh, changed that line there so we're going to just want to get a bolt or two in here just to kind of hold this in place and then get our gasket lined up as well I am going to start with a long bolt because it's easiest and we'll fiddle with the gasket until the bolt falls in. So I'm going to call that my first one. And then I'm going to grab to just kind of back my play. I'm going to grab one of the galvanized bolts that you had to put the washers on. And I'm just going to kind of set it in get it to engage and you know, these are six metrics so if i get two of them in i know i've probably got i'm probably at a point where 
gasket is going to line up. I'm going to check my hole. Yep, looks good. All right. So now we're going to go with our bolts that are going to be on the internal sides of this. Your dipstick is still going to be there, so you're going to have to kind of work around that. All right. So inside of your bank's kit, you got a tube of blue Loctite. You want to make sure that you Loctite all the bolts. So I will go back to my two that I use for placement them so we want to use blue loctite here and then just simply use a magnet on the bolt itself and then we will get it down through the intake and start it magnet there once it engages a couple of threads should be able to pull the magnet out and the bolt stay there just like so well, now we'll take a six now one thing is to show you here banks does send a set of a piece of bar stock for you in the kit and then you can use that if you don't have a long six metric to get down there and get to that bolt i've got the tools i need to do this so i'm just going to go ahead and kind of snug this bolt down no you guys don't know So I'll go ahead and get that bolt started. And then the same with this inner one. The inner one's kind of hard to get to. So you want to do the same thing here. This is the flange bolts that you want to be using. Put you a little bit of Loctite on it. That's included in the kit. Use your magnet to send it home. Get a couple of turns on it. And then you should be able to remove your magnet just like so. And then you can go ahead and run your thing down. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the rest of our bolts in. And we're going to get these front two back out. We're going to get them Loctited. Uh, you want to torque everything down here to 18 to 20 foot pounds. All right. So torquing on our torque sequence, we're going to start with the internal uh, bolt here and take it to 18 to 20 foot pounds uh, and then we're just going to start in it then we're going to go in a crisscross pattern uh, and get everything taken care of here so we got that first one done there and then we're just going to start kind of working around it just like you were doing cylinder head bolts here so And pattern of how you all want to do this is totally up to you. I'm just just going by, you know, what I want to do here. So uh, next we're going to do the dipstick adapter. The, dip sti the dipstick adapter, what this is going to do is this is going to move the dipstick out of the way of the, uh, of the, the uh, intake air heater that we're going to put in. And we're going to go ahead and install it right now. And there's a bolt that comes in the kit, little short flange headed bolt that we're going to use for this and we'll tighten that down and then we will have access to move our uh, dipstick over honestly it, had i thought through this probably would have eh, maybe i was gonna say i might have installed outside the truck but i don't think so i think this is probably gonna work out just fine just like this so we'll go ahead and install that and tighten it down and then uh, you use your stock uh, bolt for your uh, dipstick back so we'll go ahead and i'm going to tighten this down i'm going to grab my stock bolt out from behind the truck you have to manipulate that to where everything lines up and then you're good to go there so we'll go ahead and tighten that down then we'll get our stock bolt back and put our dipstick on next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tighten up our clamp on our uh, on our intercooler boot here before we forget it
Okay, we're gonna go ahead and install our intake air heater now. And one thing that I wanna show you on this, I wanna make sure that we can see this, is there's two nuts on the intake air heater. Now your 12, uh, your power supply wire that originally supplied power to the to the grid heater is gonna supply power to this. But the one thing that you wanna remember is with these two nuts, you wanna make sure that you don't run the bottom nut down or the, jam the two nuts together to where the insert, you turn it. Because if you turn it and it turns inside this ceramic heater, um, it, it, the, the heater's useless. So what Banks tells you in the instruction is take your bottom nut and leave it about two threads off of the bottom. And then we go ahead and we remove our top one and apply a little bit of thread sealant on the threads and then go ahead and install that be careful working around it just make sure that you don't bend it or anything like that but i find it easier to do this before the egr valve goes on so we'll tighten that down we'll check our bottom nut to make sure that it's stayed a couple threads off of the bottom just be real easy around it here one inch on this plug you don't have to get crazy on tightening it there we go. Okay, I'm gonna check it one more time. Yeah, a couple of threads there. So we're good to go on the uh, intake heater. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and connect our forward uh, injector harness, which is right here. And we'll go ahead and push that in until it clips. Okay. And next is what I think is probably the hardest part of this job, and it's really not even bad. It's this forward uh, PCV hose right here. The fit between the rubber isolator and the bank's intake is very, very tight. Now, banks, no fault to banks here. They've done a good job, uh, but you just gotta keep working with this. So that's what I do. I'll start that hose on and just keep pushing, and eventually it will go on up. You just gotta keep working with it and um, get back. There is a flange on the back here. If you have to, you can get a pry bar um, back there and pry on it, but just keep your hands uh, dry. And I work from the back here. I push my uh, cover, the PCV hose back, and then uh, I grab the hard portion of the PVC hose and I just keep on pushing. So I'm gonna go ahead and push that up now. Uh, and get that part done. All right, we're gonna go ahead and start manipulating our 12 volt wire here to bring it over to our uh, intake air heater. So on the wire here, there is a, uh, there was a, a little push pin uh, for the wire uh, when the old bolts were in it, the other old intake there to clip it so we're not going to be using that we're going to go ahead and get that off because that'll rub a spot in our bank intake and then again we want to check this bolt or check this nut make sure it's a couple of threads off the bottom here and i know i keep talking about this but banks makes a lot of reference to it in their instructions so they find it pretty critical uh, before you start this you want to make sure you've got uh, two eight metric wrenches ready and what you'll be doing here and I'll show you before I put the wire on you'll be holding the bottom with the bo with the bottom eight and then tightening with the top and then this keeps that stem from turning inside the heater we'll check that one more time there we go all right so we're a couple of threads off the bottom get yourself some high temp Loctite this does not come in the kit uh, needs to be the high temp or the uh, uh, high temp thread locker here the red so we'll put a drop or two on the threads there. All right. So we'll get our top nut ready and then we'll bring that wire around. I've already manipulated it the way I want it. So we're gonna set it on top of that bottom nut and then we're just gonna ease the top one down. I'm not gonna put any pressure on it that I don't have to before I get my before I can get my wrench on the bottom nut. Just like so. Now I can go ahead and tighten this top one down and I don't have to worry about uh, turning inside of the uh, ceramic there. So 
I'm just gonna snug that down real nice and easy, just like so. Well, it's got our 12 volt wire to our intake air heater there, and we will be in good shape. It's not gonna make contact with anything there, so good and clean, ready to go on to our next step. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start doing my electrical connectors that are on the back of the uh, Banks Ram intake. So you'll have your map and your throttle valve connection. Your throttle valve connection will be the large black connector here. So I'm just gonna line it up and go ahead and push it on the box till it clips and then push my uh, lock over on it. And same thing here for the, or for the map. This is the gray one for the map so we'll get it lined up and get it on just push it till it clips just like so so that'll have our uh, connections on the back side then we we'll probably need to go ahead and get our extensions ready uh, while we're here working on it so we're gonna have an extension for the EGR valve itself that will be the uh, that will be the brown so you just want to give female to male here push it till it clips and then the temp sensor same thing here female to male push it till it clips and then slide your lock over so these two extensions that uh, bank sends for you they will be used you can go back to your bottom stud with the clip there that push pin i don't like that because that's going to rub through so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to remove it because it will not be used here so i'm just going to take it off so it doesn't uh, rub through my wire and heart or rub through my, my banks intakes we move it as well so that gets that smooth force so now we're ready uh, to set our EGR valve on and we're gonna do that real quick the EGR valve you want to make sure that you put the gaskets on it that banks includes in the kit We'll set these on here and then we're just going to gently sit our EGR valve itself down. I'm not going to tighten it down just yet. I'm going to tighten it down once I get my cover on and I'm not going to put my cover on until I get my crossover tube in and get those lined up. using your stock hardware back here. I'll get these lined up as best I can. And again, I'm not gonna fully tighten these down until I get my cover on the front. And you can go ahead and hook the electrical connector for the the electrical connector up uh, for your EG uh, R valve and push it to it clips All right. so we're pretty well set and ready to go there I've got my back ones farther down than my front ones just because it just makes it easier so and now we're ready to go ahead and set our crossover tube in all right we're going to go ahead and do our our egr crossover tube now there's a p-clip that's normally on the front of this we go ahead and take this off because it just won't make it back there and i like to do the cooler side of this the flat washer or the the flat gasket goes on this side the flat metal gasket goes on this side and it'll sit on the egr uh, or on the, the crossover tube, and then that just kind of engages there. I've already got my clamp on here, so all I've kind of got to do is hold that tube with my hand and then get our clamp on, which is easier said than done sometimes. Right, so once your clamp's on, then you pretty well got the tube lick there. So I just push it together with my hand and I'll run a, that down there and you don't want to tighten it up and then on the uh, the motor side here um, I've got my clamp on again and the 
the crossover tube can articulate when you leave this loose like this. Um, that's sitting there pretty well right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get my gasket for this side. This side gets the, the soft um, form, I call them thermal gaskets. I'm trying to slide that in here. And of course it's not gonna cooperate because I'm filming. I'll sit it in there and get it past my clamp. Like so. And then I'll just ease my clamp over it. And then clip everything on. Just gotta be careful around the around that powder coat. So there we go. Right there. And I'll leave it just about like that. And then I'll kind of tighten down both sides here. So we've got both of our clamps on. We're sitting here looking at our electrical connector for our temp sensor. So we'll go ahead and hook it up until it clips and then push our lock and slide on it. And now what we can do is go ahead and get our, um, go ahead and get our uh, cover, our bank's cover on. So to do this one, talk as I'm walking away I apologize there is a aluminum spacer and a bolt that we will use here so I'm going to set this on the valve cover and then I'm going to remove my front EGR bolts then I'll place the EGR bolts in the Cover like so. And I'll place my other one in here as well. Then I'll have to get a ratchet and tighten those up. Uh, these will, all four of these bolts will tighten to uh, 18 foot pounds. And then we're going to put our aluminum spacer on the back side here. And then the nut or the bolt that uh, screw that Banks provides us here. And that actually goes into a un previously unused hole on the thing. So I'm going to come back. I'm going to torque down my uh, four bolts for my EGR here and get that taken care of. And yeah, we're, we're getting pretty close. For the bolts, I go on a crisscross pattern here, uh, and then I'll use 10 metric and an extension for the fronts, and then I'll use a short uh, 10 metric at the back uh, to get back to these, get torqued, uh, to get the, the torque that I need here, just like so. All right, we're gonna be putting our heat shield on now and totally had forgotten about this, um, to be honest with you. So uh, you'll want to pull that wiring harness back off the front here and you'll go ahead and slip this across the that stud and then use our stock bolts back and tighten them back down. All right, and then we will uh, tighten the nut down on the, the stud here. And then our wiring harness is gonna come back over. Our wiring harness is gonna come back over and, uh, and push in right there. 
and then our wiring harness will push on there. So I'll go back and I'll tighten these down and then I'll need to do our two 11 metric clamps for our EGR uh, crossover right here. And so I'll come back, I'll get this, uh, get these bolts tightened down uh, for our heat shield and then get our, our wire and harness clipped back over there. All right, here's our final view of the finished product. You do not put the cover back on, does not fit uh, here, but I've got everything tightened back down. I've got this wiring harness up uh, here. I made a uh, mistake because I'd forgotten about this heat shield. I'm gonna leave it in the video so everybody can rag on me for it but uh, there was a christmas tree clip for this wiring harness right here i cut it off because i didn't want it to make contact with the bank's housing uh, that was incorrect we do not do that uh, i've zip tied that back there and that keeps that heart wiring harness out of the way so yeah everything looks good uh here uh, you know you want to make sure that your 12 volt wire is not making contact with any metal because if you do you're going to have some sparky christmas stuff going on in here and yeah, everything looks good. Just go back through all your connections. Uh, make sure you've got everything done, uh, pushed in and connected. Um, and the last thing that we'll do here is we will reattach our batteries and we're going to take her for a drive. All right, so we got our Banks Monster Ram on our 2018 6.7 truck. I mean, installation was really straightforward. Um, you know, getting the fuel rail off of it and getting the uh, stock intake uh, runner off you know, really isn't hard to do. It just takes time to do it and do it correctly. So um, really impressed with everything that Banks does inside of this kit to make sure that they send you everything that you need. Every little detail, every gasket, uh, all the way down to them sending you the extension of Allen stock there so you can tighten up the bolt in the, uh, in the middle of the actual intake plenum itself. So they did a really good job of sending you everything that you need and um, just a really, really good kit. I mean, you think about the kit, what it's gonna save you from having an engine failure. I mean, honestly, it's just a drop in the bucket. It's, it's very affordable uh, considering that engines now are anywhere between seven and $12,000, you know, just, just depending on what you're doing there. So uh, we really, really appreciate Banks sending this kit down for us. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our startup. So on Common Rail, anytime you opened up Common Rail at all, uh, you're going to have an extended crank time. I like to crank, you know, probably about five seconds and then try to let off of it. Um, but yeah, that, those are the types of things you just kind of got to be aware of. So we're going to go ahead and start the truck up and then we're going to take it on drive and we'll close out here and, and tell you what we think about it. So I'll check at this point, I'll check and see if I have any outward leaks. Just to make sure we don't have anything going on there. Everything looks good. So that took us four pretty good cranks to get it going. That's that's very common. So you'd be looking for check engine lights here. You want to make sure you know check engine lights are on. Uh, the grid heater seemed to, well, not the grid heater now, our intake air heater seemed to function correctly summertime now. So our wait to start light was not on for very long. So sounds good. We'll let her sit here and run, check, make sure we don't have any other leaks or anything like that. We'll give it a few minutes and then we're going to take her on a drive. In closing here, uh, installation very straightforward. 
and what this is going to save you from a potential engine failure and you know what i wasn't prepared for this closing i will have this piece in my closing which is kind of what we're focusing on we're focusing on here not only increasing airflow on the engine but really saving you from having a catastrophic failure that's caused by that bolt we don't have to worry about that anymore with this kit they did a really good job of fit and finish on the kit i really really like it uh, a couple things to kind of talk through um, as we're you know, as we're doing our first initial drive, you wanna make sure that you don't have any hard starts after that first one. It should start crisp, it should start like it should. Uh, if you come back and you've got a hard start, you might wanna look back at your lines. You might wanna check your paint marks on your feed tubes and see if anything's become dislodged there. I know that that's gonna be um, a hassle, but you're gonna have to go back into it. So uh, you just don't, you don't want a hard, if you've got a hard start, you got a long crank, you got a leak back somewhere and you gotta get it fixed. Soot trails is the next thing. So with the EGR crossover tube, if something were to happen and we were to miss a gasket or something like that, we want to make sure there's no uh, soot trails. And then along the intake plate as well. Uh, if something happens and we don't get the gasket seated, maybe a bolt we didn't get uh, uh, we didn't get tightened down, you want to look for soot trails in there from the coming days uh, and the coming drives to make sure that you've got everything tightened down here. Because you touch a lot of the systems on the truck that really honestly can affect the way it drives if it's incorrect. So for sure, you wanna look for long cranks, you wanna look for soot trails uh, along the intake and every place that you touch there to make sure you don't have any air leaks. But this truck runs phenomenal. I mean, for stock fueling right now, we don't have anything done in this truck, not a programmer, not anything. We've just got a uh, upgraded drop-in turbo on it and then we've got the Banks Monster Ram intake and it runs really, really good, which is impressive for just air adjustments on an emission equipped truck like this. So. If you've got a 6.7 Dodge, we've talked ad nauseum about this. The bolt on the grid heater supply uh, and nut can cost you an engine. So get rid of it. Get yourself a Banks Monster Ram intake. Trust me, you'll thank us later. So if you have a question about this installation or any of our other uh, installation videos or any of the Banks products that we sell, just give us a call. And thanks for watching.